So today, we're going to be talking about buffers. What is a buffer? A buffer is any solution that can resist a drastic change in pH when small amounts of strong acid or base are added. Buffers are designed to neutralize both H plus and OH minus ions, therefore keeping the pH of a solution from changing too much when you're adding strong acid or base to the buffer solution. So how does a buffer work? A buffer works by containing both a weak acid and its conjugate base in order to neutralize bases. If you are adding a base to the solution, you would want to make a buffer from a weak acid and its conjugate base. Now, there are a few rules to keep in mind when you're making a buffer. The acid-base pair that you're using can't neutralize itself. So if you use HCl and NaOH to make your buffer, this is a neutralization reaction, therefore producing H2O and salt. Because it's been neutralized already, if you were to add strong base or strong acid to this, the pH would change drastically. However, what will work is if you use acetic acid and sodium acetate. Therefore, if you were to add a strong base to your acetic acid buffer, you would pr produce acetate ion and water. Therefore, neutralizing your strong base and keeping the pH of your solution relatively close to what it originally was before you added the base. Now, there is an easy calculation you can use to determine the pH of your buffer. Or, you can also use this calculation to determine the amount of acid or base needed to produce a buffer at a certain pH. It's called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And it's really useful if you're trying to make a buffer at a certain pH, because obviously if you want a buffer solution, you would want your pH to be around the same, or else you would change the pH with your buffer, which is kind of counterproductive. So, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is pH equals pKa plus log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. Or, pH equals pKa minus the log of the concentration of the acid over the base. Now, there is a way to determine how much acid or base a buffer can successfully neutralize. This is called buffer capacity. So the buffer capacity states the amount of acid or base that can be added to a buffered solution before the pH will change to any large degree. Now, if you have two solutions, for example, one with a one molar buffer and the other one with a 0.1 molar buffer, it's obvious to see that the buffer one molar can neutralize a lot more acid or base than the 0.1 molar. The reason is the one molar buffer has one mole of the ions used for neutralization, while the 0.1 molar only has 0.1 moles for each liter. Therefore, one mole of hydronium hydroxide ions can be neutralized here. As with here, you can only neutralize 0.1. And this graph over here is a graph showing the buffer capacity of acetic acid at given pHs. Now this leads us to our next slide, which is the pH range of a buffer. The pH range is a way of determining buffer capacity, and it determines which pHs the buffer is most effective. A buffer is the most effective when the concentrations of the acid and the conjugate base are equal. Therefore, if you remember the henderson hasselbalch equation, it will be when the log is, it's the log of 1. Therefore, we all know a log of 1 is 0. So, therefore, your pH will equal to pKa. So if you were to make a buffer that's the most effective, you would want your pH to equal pKa, where you'll get the highest buffer capacity for the given concentration. Now, where are buffers used in real life? Blood and oceans would be a great example. For example, when you consume an acidic fruit, like a citrus, your pH in your body doesn't suddenly become acidic, or else you would be dead. Therefore, the body uses a carbonic, carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer in order to neutralize the added acid or base into your body. The same goes for the ocean. The ocean is so big that therefore if you have hydrothermal vents or if you have acid rain, to a certain amount it will change a pH if it was not buffered. But the ocean also uses a carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer to keep its pH relatively in check over the years. So, enough about slide bolts. The easiest way to see how a buffer works, obviously, is to make your own buffered solution. That's exactly what I've done here. Over here on the left, you have a, a sodium acetate acetic acid buffer. On the right, you have just regular distilled water. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one molar 
sodium hydroxide into each of these solutions. But before I do that, I'm going to test the pH of each of these. And then I'm going to test the pH after adding the base in order to see how much the pH has changed. So, if we test the pH of a buffered solution, see that's right around pH of 5. If we test the pH of the distilled water, we see that's fairly close to the pH of 7. Now that's before you add the sodium hydroxide. Upon addition of the sodium hydroxide, we can tell that the pH is going to increase, obviously, because it's a strong base. However, it should be pretty clear that the buffered solution will change by a less of a degree than the unbuffered solution, which is just distilled water. So let's add sodium hydroxide into our buffered solution and into our distilled water. This is one molar sodium hydroxide right here that we have. So upon mixing both solutions to get an equal concentration of the sodium hydroxide throughout, we'll test for the pH again, starting off with our buffered solution. So I'm going to use the other side of this litmus paper. As you can see, the pH hasn't really changed much, as you can tell by the colors. It's still right around 5. In fact, if you were to use a pH probe, you'd see that the change is only about 0.1 of a pH. However, if you were to test the distilled water, we see that the pH has changed a great degree from the initial to the final. And if you were also to use a pH probe, you would see that the pH changes about 4 to 5 pH points. So if we look at the difference, it's easy to tell that the buffered solution, the pH changes a lot less because the buffer can neutralize the added base. However, the distilled water, which is unbuffered, can't neutralize it. Therefore, the pH changes greatly. So now you know that buffers are practical not only in real life, but also in nature, and that they act to help keep the pH of a solution around the same when added acids or bases are placed into the solution.